coming up on today's show. We do do so much fossil fuel. Warming of the atmosphere. In our previous episode, we looked at how badly climate change is affecting South Africa. Day zero. It's real bad. Massive floods twice the global average. How bad? Very bad. But what is the single biggest cause of all of this climate breakdown? You guessed it, the F word. Fuels. Our energy consuming way of life may be causing climatic changes with adverse consequences for us all. Action now is seen as the only safe insurance. Oh wow, thanks for that 1991 Shaw. Although there are other causes of climate change, like burning down the Amazon, or that tasty piece of Buddha you're planning to chow this bright day. The legacy is inside this tube. Almost 90% of carbon dioxide greenhouse gases are caused by fossil fuels like oil, gas, and coal. Take a look at how carbon dioxide levels have skyrocketed in the last few decades. And as for South Africa, surely a tiny, tiny country like us at the bottom of Africa, is it South Africa? With an unidentified leader, can't be adding very much to the global waste dump in the sky, right? Wow, much like watching Bafana Bafana, prepare for total disappointment. Let's get away. We all know South Africa has a crime problem. But did you know South Africa itself is a criminal? A carbon criminal. South Africa is not only the biggest carbon polluter in Africa, but it's actually the 14th biggest in the world. Very disappointing. In 2015, per person, he spewed out more carbon than the UK, EU, and even China. Yep, this China. Even toddlers don masks. So what's causing this? South Africa, being a country rich in coal, made sure to develop powerful coal-driven power companies called Sasol and Eskom. Sasol makes petrol out of coal, but it's extremely polluting. With Sasol's coal to liquid plant, Secunda, the single largest point source of carbon dioxide emissions anywhere on Earth. Disgusting. Just these two companies alone pump out more than half of South Africa's entire carbon emissions today. And Sasol alone emits more carbon dioxide than whole countries like Ireland and Portugal. Very bad, very bad, very bad. I asked environmental activist Magoma Ligalaka how Cecil and other major polluters in SA are getting away with this. I think they're hiding behind loopholes in the legislation not to comply and also the issue that we're still a developing country which I believe, whether developing or not, we should all be responsible. Maybe it's also because Cecil knows how to hit us right in the fields. It starts with a nostalgic Continues with art. To have a platform like this for young artists around the country, it's fantastic. Football. At Cecil, we are extremely proud. Music. They are so dedicated to our project. Birds. Cecil Birds of Southern Africa. And ends with the irresistible. Cecil Bursary Program. Basically everything is covered. You even have spare money at the end of the day. Managed to save off my money and buy my first car with it. Ah, guys, fees must fall. For what? With Cecil around as a blesser. The truth is, Sassel's just one of many companies making us think that they care so much about us. Sassel needs to maybe tell our, our story a little better here in South Africa because we do do so much for the country. We pay the most taxes. Thank you. While at the same time, destroying our future. The fossil fuel companies, of which Sassel is a fossil fuel company, their product is a poison, is a killer, is a destroyer. Just ask the people living in Bumalanga. Mpumalanga is said to have the dirtiest air in the world. Communities around Sassel plants marched on the company's headquarters. Anyone in that area is suffering from um, bronchitis or asthma. Eskom is probably the biggest killer for our people in this area. People who are sick, very sick. The main reason why I have TB because of the environment. And the scariest part is, when asked about carbon reduction targets, Sassel freely admitted to having none. I've never taken the high road but I tell other people to, because then there's more room for me on the low road. In fact, they seem to be doing the opposite. The company has taken the government to court over new regulations. The opening of Shondoni Mine signifies a growing investment by Sasol. We're going to do a lot of exploration. Three replacement mines, that's part of a 14 billion rand investment. Any new 
investment into new fossil fuel projects, given what we know must be understood as an investment into the debt of our children and their children. Excellent. At the end of the day, SA needs to find a way to swipe left on Cecil and other carbon intensive companies who refuse to change. I'm not really sure if he felt any chemistry buds and said no from me. They're just not compatible with the carbon-free world South Africa signed up to, promising to cut our carbon emissions in the 2015 Paris Agreement. South Africa is delighted to sign the Paris Climate Change Agreement today. But that's not likely to happen. While the government keeps saying one thing. We should live up to our Paris Convention. We need to act with greater urgency to the effects of climate change Climate, climate, climate change ravages. Global climate, 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 warming of the atmosphere, dangerous climate change, climate emergency. But doing the exact opposite. World class oil and gas discovery of the coast of South Africa. The catalytic find. A true game changer. We congratulate Total and wish them well in their endeavors. For us as government, it is crucial that we partner. Exploration, expansion, new mines, thermal coal, coal, coal. Coal, 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 and coal. Cleaner, coal energy. Cleaner, coal. Now you look like the Minister of Coal. But surely Cyril has a plan, guys. I mean, come on. This is the new dawn, right? Mining in South Africa is indeed sunrise industry. Oops, wrong clip. I meant this one. On the 8th of March, we will be launching a landmark campaign to mobilize all South Africans. This is something that we would like to undertake on a whole scale basis. It's aimed at changing things such as littering, pick up a broom, a bag, and make South Africa clean. What? I thought we were going to stop catastrophic climate breakdown and certain doom with a kick-ass AOC-style Green New Deal. Instead, we get the hashtag refuse the store report starring this guy. <laughs> the unfortunate reality is our government's main climate change plan has been rated highly insufficient. But at least government is trying. We're one of the first developing countries in the world with a carbon tax, which will try to motivate companies like ESCOM and Sasol to cut their emissions. You can do it! Whether we can have bills, or we can have green deals. I think what is just remaining now, it's a political will from those who are in governance and it's people's actions that would actually improve the situation. So what do you say to South Africans that say climate change can wait? We want jobs now. Climate change cannot wait. Job, yes, we want them. But in which environment would you go in to have those jobs? You cannot have jobs in a dead planet. <laughs> This is a lot, guys. Neither the government nor the fossil fuel companies are really doing anything serious about carbon emissions. Meanwhile, time is running out. This is why a new generation is demanding that the fight against climate change actually be turned into a fight for a system change. We need a whole new way of thinking. We need to cooperate and work together and to share the resources of the planet in a fair way. A system change that shifts our priorities from growth to well-being. In our next episode, we'll take a look at who's fighting for this new world. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Until next time, stay woke, stay awake.